one day, Henry was coming to the steamworks to be repainted. He was very excited. There you go, Henry. Now, where on earth are those snifty valves? Thanks, everyone. When the job was done, Henry left the steamworks, very happy and very green. Thomas was just finishing his last job of the day when he saw Henry. What? What's that? <gasps> A ghost! Ah, there's James! I'll show you. Oh, wow. I must have been painted with the wrong paint. That's why everyone was running away from me. They must have thought I was a ghost train. <laughs> You'll have to take the mail train, Thomas. Me? <laughs> I'm not doing it. How about... Edward! I'm not setting one wheel out there in the dark. Well, if Henry is out there pulling the flying kipper, surely one of you can take the mail train. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Only me! Henry? You mean you're the ghost train? It's not fair. We all got told off by Sir Topham Hatt because of you. Um, where is Sir Topham Hatt? <laughs> oh. Well, it's perfectly obvious what's happened, isn't it? Is it? Uh, of course. Uh, oh. Henry must have been painted with the wrong kind of paint. You'll need to return to the steamworks first thing in the morning and get yourself repainted with some proper green paint. Yes, sir. I shall, sir. However, since you were the only engine working tonight, you'll receive a glowing report. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. Do you think we might see the monster of Brendam today, Cranky? There's no such thing as the monster of Brendam. Salty's being silly. Salty's not being silly. I'm sure there's a monster of Brendam. And Percy puffed proudly away. It was foggy. Percy chuffed carefully. He could see Edward. Edward had coal to deliver. Would you like to come and find the monster of Brendam with me? Salty said the monster is tall, like a tower. It turns and it twists. It croaks and it creaks. Edward pumped his pistons and with a whir of his wheels, he whooshed forward straight into rocking. Coal dust flew everywhere and Percy chuffed away. Percy steamed slowly to the level crossing. Toby was there. Hello, Percy. I don't like all this fog. I do. I'm looking for the monster of Brendam. Trebling tracks. It sounds scary. And Percy chuffed away. Have you seen the monster of Brendam? Pumping pistons. A monster? It's over there. It's croaking and creaking. It's the monster of Brendam. And Henry raced away like the wind. With a croak and a creak, diesel oil towards him. Out of my way, you silly steamy! Percy wobbled and wished. Then he whooshed all the way back to Brendam Docks. Did you find them then? 
The monster of Brendam? No, I didn't. I told you there was no such thing. You're right, Cranky. I didn't find the monster. I am a very silly steamy. <gasps> I was so busy finding the monster, I didn't go back to help my friends. First, Percy found Rocky and Edward. Don't worry, Edward. There is no monster. Follow me. Then he found Toby. Percy, Edward and Toby puffed into the docks. There he is. It's tall, like a tower. It turns and it twists. It croaks and it creaks. The, the monster, monster of Brendam. Then, out of the fog, the monster spoke. Where have you been, you silly steamy? The tables and chairs are waiting. Cranky! That's right, me hearties. Cranky, our very own monster of Brendam. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, the mayor of Sodor and I are to attend a celebratory ball at Callan Castle. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, we'll need an engine to take us there. If it's that important, you should be carried by a really splendid engine like me, sir. <laughs> Typical James, always trying to get the best jobs. I know. And the mayor lives on my branch line near Suttery. Well, James was the first to speak up, so he gets the job. Oh, thank you, sir. Just so long as you get the rest of your work done in time, James. I won't let you down, sir. Here's James. James was exhausted, but excited, having been cleaned up at the washdown. Hmm. What is it? Um, uh, nothing, James. Just, uh, just a little scratch on your paintwork. Oh, a scratch. A scratch? That isn't nothing! I, I can't pick up the mirror looking like this! Victor, I have a special job tonight and I need to be repainted right now. But your paint won't be dry. Don't worry, I thought about that. It's a very windy evening, so that, plus my speed, should dry my paint in no time. Please, Victor, I don't want to let Sir Topham head down. Well, all right, my friend, if you're sure. Ah, <sighs> thank you, Victor. It's going to be a wonderful evening. James's paint was still wet and sticky as he left the steamworks. Here's James! Well, Edward, what do you think? What? What's the matter? Oh, I should have ignored that little scratch. I can't pick up the mare looking like this. Edward, I don't suppose. <clears throat> Could you take the mare to the ball for me, please? Oh, I'd be happy to, James. <laughs> and while he was waiting for his paint to dry, he had a surprise visitor. Oh, hello, your worshipfulness. <laughs> hello, James. And would you like to take me to a dinner in Vickerstown tonight, James? I'd be. Honored, Mr. Mayor. That night, James felt very proud to be taking the mayor to Vickerstown. What's that noise? Ah, <laughs> that'll be the flatbeds of fear, Thomas. The flatbeds of fear? An old engine was puffing along the tracks, pulling three flatbeds, when suddenly his coupling snapped. Ah! And the flatbeds rolled away. 
how the flatbeds roll the rails, a whistling and a wailing and looking for an engine to couple up to. <laughs> so, me hearty, beware the flatbeds of fear. They might come rolling after you. <laughs> Enough of your tall tale, Salty. Thomas has work to do. Off you go, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. I've just heard the flatbeds of fear. The flat who of what? The flatbeds of fear. Salty told me about them. That sounds spooky. It was. Oh, don't be such a pair of scaredy engines. There must be a perfectly sensible explanation. I hope so. I really do. I don't want to hear the flatbeds of fear. Oh, no! That's not a cow in a field. And it's not the god's whistle. It must be the flatbeds of fear. Henry stopped, and he wouldn't budge. Emily had to be called to take the flatbeds to Vickers Town. There was no sign of Henry. Whistling and wailing was right behind her. Oh no, maybe there isn't a sensible explanation. Maybe it really is the flatbeds of fear. Then there was trouble. Emily took a turn too fast. The pipes came loose and rolled off the flatbeds. Bubbling boilers. Ah, ha, ha. there's a bit of a breeze whipping up me arties. <laughs> oh no, it's the flatbeds of fear. There are no flatbeds of fear. That's just the wind whistling through the pipes. <laughs> you engines. Salty, you said the whistling and wailing was the flatbeds of fear. Ah, that I did, but it might just have been the wind. You were teasing us all along. Oh, <laughs> that's the way it is with us dockside diesels. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.